Good afternoon, church. Uh, this afternoon, we have welcome back missionary Lomar Hope de la Cruz. He'll be speaking from Acts chapter 16. We've been supporting him and his family since 1996 to Cambodia. I know he's going to be a blessing to you this evening. Good evening. We are so excited as a family to know that uh, our partnership with you, Pastor Reed, Mom Sandy, and Berean Bible Baptist Church have come a long way since 1996. And uh, what a joy to know that God continues to use us and help us in the ministry. And so uh, tonight, I'd like to uh, speak on the subject, the wisdom of Paul. The wisdom of Paul. And uh, we find it in Acts chapter number 16, verse 9 to 15. And so please open your Bibles to Acts chapter number 16, verse 9 to 15. And let us all read this together. Okay, you're there. Acts chapter 16, verse number 9 to 15. We'll read uh, together. Ready? Verse 9, 9 to 15. Ready, go. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came in with a straight course to Samotricia, and the next day to Neapolis. And from thence to Philippi, which is the city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony, and we were in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath we went out of the city by a riverside, where prayer was wont to be made, and we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. Verse 14. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Theatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. Verse 15. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If ye had judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. May God bless the reading of his word. And so let us now... Uh, come to God in prayer so God would bless us as we uh, learn and as we get encouragement about what Paul did with his missionary endeavor. Let us pray. Lord, thank you so much tonight for the privilege and honor to be with Berean Bible Baptist Church once again. Thank you for the blessings we had over, over these years and thank you for the partnership Thank you so much, Lord, for this month is uh, the month to emphasize missions. Help us to count this a, a great opportunity to be more involved in missions. And thank you, Lord, that even through the pandemic, the work of God continues and mission goes on. Help us not to see this as obstacles, but help us to see this as stepping stones to do more for you. Help me, Lord, to help your people tonight, and I'll bring you back glory and honor in what you're going to do in this preaching the Lord. In Christ Jesus' name I pray, amen. And so we will find out here that Paul uh, experienced so many things, and uh, as we have learned that the, the mission work is all about God's call, and uh, God calls us into doing something, God would call us into doing a ministry and uh, sometimes it wouldn't come out the way it would and then sometimes when we answer the call of God uh, we're so excited we're so energized and what a service we can do for God and we cannot wait to to go into that ministry but uh, sometimes what we expect did not come to pass what we expect did not happen and so, uh, my friends, may we always remember that God owns the ministry. 
And uh, uh, sometimes I remember what happened to me in, in Cambodia the first three years that we were there. And I thought the way we do it here in the Philippines would happen there, but it did not. And so uh, I asked myself, what am I doing? So I asked God for wisdom. I asked God for his leading. And uh, you see, language and culture and again, transportation, uh, they got all kinds of motorbikes and uh, they, you know, they uh, put a 50cc uh, pulling a trailer and uh, pulling three tons and that's how they, they, they do their uh, transportation there, even until now. And then the food is different, the health uh, uh, facilities are different, the way they do health uh, uh, protocols are different, finances are different. And sometimes we look at that our heart is willing to serve God, but the reality is different from what we expect. Our circumstances cause us to draw back and limit our service to God. That is very real. And Paul, with a similar situation on his missionary journey, uh, this happened to him. You know how he has been... Uh, uh, opposed by many and even experienced shipwreck but uh, I want you to know that when you serve God when you go where he sends you and do what he tells you you never know what results might be you'll never know what the outcome might be in detail but we know the battle belongs to the Lord mission is of God and let us just go on even in this time of pandemic we go back to the uh, time of the early missionaries like James Chalmers who was a young boy in Sunday school in Scotland in 1840s and uh, when his teacher read a letter from a missionary in Sunday school the teacher challenged the boys to consider serving God by taking the gospel to foreign lands and uh, Chalmers determined he would answer that call because of the teachers reading the story. After training, Mr. Chalmers he set out for New Guinea, which at the times were all occupied by the cannibals. And fearlessly and faithfully, he served God and preached the gospel there. And uh, there was a guy named uh, uh, Kuni. He heard a message, uh, a, a, a guy in, in New Guinea, Mr. Kuni, and uh, asked Mr. Chalmers uh, to tell him to be saved. And wow, Coney did get saved. And so Mr. Chalmers went to another village. And when he returned a few months later, he found out that Coney, his first convert, is dead. We know what happened. A tribal, uh, a, a, a rival tribe had attacked Mr. Coney and uh, a de deliberately stepped in front of a spear uh, thrown to a man and that man is not yet a Christian, is not yet saved and so he used himself as a shield and with his dying breath Mr. Coney prayed great spirit of love I come to thee save me for Jesus sake you know the missionary call is often thought of a requiring a trip to a foreign country and perhaps learning a new language but this kind of experience that Chalmers did see in his missionary journey he saw that the locals or the tribal people can give their life to God when it is needed even here in the Philippines there's a great growing number of people who are completely and obliviously uh, in eternity going uh, their lives without a Savior, living their lives without a Savior. They need to reach out. We need to reach out to them. We need to give a track to them. We need to talk to them. And in this time of pandemic, people now are easy to talk about God. It used to be that they were crumpled and gospel tract. It used to be that when you give them, they will throw it away, but now they will keep it and read it 
And my friends, we are all called to be missionaries. Some in the foreign field, some across the street. Most of us live in our country that many, many people have religion, and yet they don't have relationship with Jesus Christ. There is no shortage of people who need to hear the gospel. There is no shortage. There is a great demand for the gospel to be preached. And so, during Paul's time, you know what he had to apply the wisdom of God that God has given him as a missionary, the first missionary from Antioch. Number one, Paul had perspective of service. He could see from afar. And prior to the verses we just read in Acts chapter 16, Paul received what is known as the Macedonian call. Uh, we sing that song. We have heard the Macedonian call today. He had a vision of a man Macedonia pleading with Paul to come and help them. And so Paul answered the call. And he, along with Silas and Luke, undertook the journey described today's scripture passage in what we've read. What Paul had thought when he received such a powerful call to mission work, and then he arrived there in a major city called Philippi, and he arrived there and discovered there is no synagogue. In Israel, they have synagogue, and in that place, it takes 15 people for them to have a synagogue. <laughs> is that so? There are not yet 10 God-fearing Jews during those, those times in the whole city of Philippi. Uh, there were no Gentiles saved. In Paul's vision, there was a man calling him to Macedonia. And if, if I were him, I would be wondering, where's the man? <laughs> There's a vision, a man calling, but where's the man? Where is he? And to complicate the situation, inscribed on the arches, outside the city of Philippi was a prohibition against bringing an unrecognized religion into the city. Christianity was foreign. Bringing the gospel of Christ was foreign. This may explain that there, were, uh, there was a Jewish prayer meeting when he arrived there and uh, they did not have the prayer meeting in the synagogue, in the church, in the city, but they went to where? The riverbank, the riverside. And having been trained as a Jew, Paul, leading the Jews, Paul would have been acquainted with their, with the views of, uh, you know, women. And to him, he should not be there because they're all women. But the rabbis were known to say, it is better that the words of the law be burned than delivered to women. I don't know for you, but uh, the Jewish uh, culture and their religion, Judaism, uh, the scripture are not given for women to, to talk. But you know what? The fact that Paul was willing to speak to these women indicates that he no longer held that view. But the lack of a synagogue and there is no influence in the city plus the prohibition against religion or a new religion. And so a prayer meeting at the riverbank does not seem to be the great or a nice formula for a powerful revival, for a productive evangelistic activity in that city. So often we see things only from our perspective. Kung ano man yung ating paningin. But my friends, let me tell you, there was an organization in Montana that wanted to thin out the population of the wolves in that, in that state. And so, too many wolves, and uh, too many wolves eating their livestock, too many wolves bringing havoc into that state. And so, the state offered $5,000 for every wolf captured. Wow, a lot of money. Two boys, Mr. Sam and Jed, uh, they decided they could have made a lot of money by trapping wolves. So they went to the mountains, followed the tracks of the wolves, and uh, 
set traps. They went for several days, but no result. <laughs> One night, Sam woke up and find they were surrounded by little eyes because they were burning or were having a fire and around them reflects to the eyes of the wolves little eyes he saw four pairs six pairs eight pairs ten pairs there's a lot of them and their eyes glowed in the moonlight and their back legs poised to pounce and so Sam told Jed wake up Jed wake up we're gonna be rich <laughs> my friend our perspective is not what is the same as Apostle Paul what our perspective is it the same as the Lord Jesus Christ these two boys went hunting for wolves and they were thinking to get rich because there were a lot of wolves and my friend Ang pananaw ay magiging factor sa ating paggawa para sa Panginoon. Paul applied his wisdom in doing the ministry. Her, his perspective was not because of the culture, not because of what is going on, but what he had focused in his heart is that to make sure that these women get their encouragement and who knows, some of these women might not be saved. What you and I may sometimes see as dangerous or hostile may be opportunity for the kingdom of God. Folks, how you perceive the situation, circumstances, problem will determine the outcome. In the words of Esther, the queen, she said, who knows but that I have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. My friends, it's pandemic time. But we continue to do the work of God and have this missions conference or missions emphasis. You know why? Because, who knows, but that we do this. We do this for the glory of God. Amen? The problem is sometimes I am too quick to allow circumstances in my life to define the level of my service to God. Sometimes it, things get hard and I look for a way, way out to make it better. I look for a way to diminish the problems, but sometimes my dedication is being affected. Huh? Sometimes if people don't respond to the gospel, gospel tract distribution, evangelistic, and door to door uh, sometimes I think about what will I do to have a new gimmick for people to come to the knowledge of Christ and if Paul had done that mga kapatid, he would have failed or have bailed out and have run away from Philippi but you know what Paul understood that the service for God is always about our faithfulness to God not results amen oh we are result oriented we are ROI people, return of investment. But you know what? The reason why God came is because He loves us and because of His love and of His grace. Our work is to be faithful to Him. That's in Cambodia. Thank God. The reason I want to bail on bad situations sometimes is that I do not see the prophets. I do not see results. But that is faulty theology. Do you believe so? Such an approach says that God does only what is profitable, like He is a business uh, businessman that only cares about the bottom line. But my friend, it also means God is limited in power because all He wants is the bottom line. So He will only use the prime locations we had a lady that came visited us in Cambodia in 1990 uh, let me see now at uh, 2005 and I brought her to the work of our church in Dankau we were then uh, living in Banking Kong and the place there was uh, so muddy and so dusty and she went there with us and visited with us and tried to uh, teach the children 
And then she said to me, why here? Why here? There's, this is not city. This is outskirt. Why here? I said, this is where God put us. I cannot complain. Like the song that says, the Lord shall choose for me. This better far I know. So let him bid me go or stay. And so we did not stay in Phnom Penh only. We went to Dankau. And my friends, today, Dankau is a prime lot. Today, our property there costs a lot of money. But it's not about money. It's about people there. They thought there's no people there. Just only near the killing fields. It's all just rice fields. But today, it's all populated. And now, about 300 meters away from the church is a condominium being built. Factories being built. And then the transfer, the uh, district uh, uh, office there next to the church about one block away. You know what? God knows what He's doing. And when He leads us, and when we see the perspective through the eyes of God, what's important, my friends, is that let us do what Paul did. He had a perspective for service. Oh, my friends, that we would see this world through the eyes of God. My experience in Cambodia brings me many memories because sometimes you don't see the result right away. Little kids, we have little kids. Even until now, we still have little kids. And a 12 year old boy who was a little kid, my friends, after 15 years, uh, he is now a doctor. No, no, he's now a doctor. And he now heads our, our uh, evangelistic medical team. And just recently they went to pray being two weeks ago and many, many people got saved. My friends, sometimes we talk about building and growing churches as if it is something that we can do. That is something only God can do. God wants a relationship with us and God wants a relationship with people around the world. And part of that relationship is what? Commitment, dedication, faithfulness. Amen. You may be in a place like Paul. There were no Christians then. You look at the things around you and you ask, Am I in the right place? Lord, God, am I here in the right place? Am I doing what you want me to do? And sometimes we don't see the results right away. You question yourself. You question yourself. The circumstances may be overwhelming. Don't be too quick to throw the towel. Amen. As we're about to find out, just one convert can make all the difference. Thank God. Amen. What's important is we put sacrifice in our perspective. We put sacrifice in our perspective. David Livingstone was a Scottish missionary and an explorer at the same time who spent 35 years, I mean 33 years in the heart of Africa. He endured much suffering as he labored to spread the gospel and open the continent for missionaries. And this godly missionary once remarked, he said, People talk of sacrifice I have made in spending so much of my life in Africa. Can that be called sacrifice which is simply paid back as a small part of a great debt owing to our God, which we can never repay. It is emphatically no sacrifice at all. Say rather, it is a privilege, amen. Anxiety, sickness, suffering, or danger, now and then with a the foregoing of common conveniences and ch charities of this life may make us pause and make us sometimes have a hiccup. <laughs> And cause our spirit to waver. This pandemic, I have to be honest with you, I question myself, Lord, do I need to go back to Cambodia? Do I need to continue on? Do I need to say, uh, let's move on and let's do more for God? But you know what? God is always testing how we look at the ministry. Amen. All these are nothing when compared with the glory which shall be hereafter revealed in for us. I have never made a sacrifice of this. We ought not to talk about sacrifice. 
when we remember the great sacrifice Christ has done and made and he left Father's throne on high to give himself for us as a sacrifice for our salvation. And so our perspective for sacrifice must be a privilege. Amen. Our service is a privilege for God. Amen. Number two, the pattern for service. There is a pattern. There is a formula. The Macedonian call was not about huge numbers. Do you think so? There was only one convert at first. A woman named Lydia. Only one. But the Lord used her greatly to aid Paul. I remember the grand grandmother named Samnian, the grandmother of our little girl named Nita who comes to our, our church in Campo Cham since uh, 2011 February and she's been coming and uh, her grandmother said oh uh, I cannot come to church every Sunday but I can come on special occasion and she said after church she said oh uh, uh, I cannot change from my uh, culture but uh, you can take my grandchildren you can take all our grandchildren and you know what that gave us the opportunity to open another Christian school we had a Christian school in Trang Trayang in the province of Kampung Spu in 2007 we started it and today more than 400 kids in that uh, Christian school and 15 minutes of Bible is being taught every day and now we have another one in Kampung Cham and through the uh, uh, family of Nita God challenged us to start a Christian school that's why we have another Christian school in Kampung Cham we named it International School of Truth and through this pandemic our teachers are there and they're teaching their kids by module and sending them lessons sometimes we will look and think oh just a lady oh just a kid but you know what we know very little about Lydia this woman here a woman northwest Turkish town of Theatera known for the guilds and of craftsmen and every every uh, uh, every time we would look at this lady we would think oh she might be a professional uh, business lady and deals with expensive purple uh, dye to uh, make a nice color and uh, Lydia was a member of that guild a, lim a member of the uh, Chamber of Commerce of Philippi and we don't know how it was for that a woman had become one of these professionals but well, when we first met her she had crossed into northeastern Greece and had established her business in Roman city of Philippi and as a seller of rare and expensive purple dye, Lydia must have enough wealth to buy that franchise. I don't know how much it costs for the capital. But we'll learn in Acts 16, while born and reared to believe in the gods and the goddesses of Theatira, Lydia did not worship the pantheon of gods and uh, venerated in her own hometown. But instead, she became a God fear she had already taken a major step away from the religious upbringing and have investigated about Jewish Jewish claims of the one God and wanted to know more about the God of the Jews and many God fears became Jewish proselytes and so Lydia at Philippi by the riverside with a group of women would come together there to pray at uh, she was a Gentile her exposure into a traditional synagogue would have been severely limited not much or there's you can say maybe zero but here at the riverbank she had found a place where we say where you belong sometimes people don't feel comfortable to go to a traditional church uh, but they are comfortable by the sideways and we must go where the people are amen 
And sometimes we cannot have, we cannot bring people to church, but we bring church to them. We bring the songbooks to them. We bring the Bible to them. And we do this every week on our evangelistic efforts, track distribution, and uh, we bring fruits to people and uh, visit them and uh, uh, talk to them. And we have medical missions and, and village evangelism. And we go visit the prisons and all these things we do. Why? People don't feel comfortable to come to church and they don't have a way to come to church. But we just have to bring the gospel to them. It was there that Paul and Silas meet her and talk with her about Jesus. And there she became the first convert of Christianity in Greece. And she was convinced of the truth of the Christian gospel and believing that it was for everyone. So she bore witness to her entire household with her and they were all baptized. The apostles stayed with her for several weeks instructing her and her household in that what she needed they had everyday bible study i suppose and she became a follower of jesus christ and in her large house she began the first house church praise god in greek soil welcoming new believers into the fellowship and faith Magapatet, it doesn't have to be a big cathedral it doesn't have to be a church building to start the work of god and I remember our work in Marimti started in that little house on a bed uh, made of bamboo. And praise God, because of that, God allowed us to see many people saved and start to work there. Like Lydia opened her home and her home became the house church. Lydia was successful in both her professional work and in social and spiritual work, nurturing the Greek church. Amen. Most likely the knowledge her in her uh, church work and uh, vice versa. Uh, Lydia may see as a woman whose skill and interest is not only confined and limited to one area. I believe God gave her the talent and indeed we see both her position in commerce and her knowledge of faith through Apostle Paul made her qualified to be one of the leader of the church and paul spoke the bible says that she listened opened her heart and this was a process that continued in other words paul led her a little bit further down the road of intellectuality and understanding the word of god and how he had been sent by the lord jesus christ to that city and some people came to know Christ as their Savior. And my friends, others need to listen, need to ponder, need to come back more and more. But it is God who puts the pieces into place. God puts the pieces into place. Like building a big building or building a big Lego toy <laughs> God puts the pieces sometimes we don't understand what it would be but when the big picture or the big uh, uh, toy is finished it is an eagle or it is a, 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 a superhero but you know what Christ is the center of the pieces of that puzzle Paul was in the right place and at Philippi with a group of women in that moment Mga kapatid, she opened her heart, the Lord blessed her, and in her house became the center of the work of God there in Philippi. To bring someone in your home sometimes is to upset the order of your home. And for every person you are hospitable to, uh, this order increases in the home. That's why when you have Visitors, you just put them in the uh, uh, hotel, and your visitor, you put them up in a, a guest house. And uh, but it doesn't matter the size of the home. When you have visitors, it rearranges your your, your place. But for Lydia, she was hospitable and had the ability to be hospitable because maybe the size of her home. But she had a desire, and she urged Apostle Paul. 
to stay. She urged the Apostle Paul to stay. Praise God. Everything big started small. And in that home where Paul stayed became the church in the Gentile land. What a story. Amen. The pattern of service is what? The pattern of service is start small. Amen. Take the first step. No car goes to the fourth gear right away. I saw this bus company right next to uh, Bible Baptist Temple in San Joaquin Pasig. And uh, they put there, right there, in front of the driver. Wag simulan sa second gear. Simulan sa unang gear. Para hindi masira ang clutch. <laughs> when you start the second gear, it's, it destroys the clutch. It destroys the engine. It destroys the gearbox. But you have to start the first gear. Why? Because everything starts on the first. Amen. First stage. And there are stages in doing the ministry. The pattern is that you start small and then small and then bigger, a little bit bigger, small, medium, large, amen, extra large, XXL, amen. <laughs> Praise God, when I started as a missionary, uh, my, 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 my size was just uh, medium large. But then after deputation, I became large and now I cannot fit on a large, I have to wear an extra large, amen. And thank you for this pandemic. <laughs> We eat a lot of, uh, of, uh, of food, but so uh, uh, come uh, uh, May, uh, we, we now start to eat, uh, do intermittent fasting. Why? There's a pattern to life, amen, to be healthy. The same as in the ministry, have to have the pattern for service to God. And uh, what a joy that the house of Lydia became the church in Teatira. Number three, and we all have three points, the purpose of service. What is the purpose of our service? Okay, look at verse 40. Verse 40 of, uh, of the same chapter, Acts 16, verse 40. Tinan po natin. What does the Bible say in verse number 40? And they went out of the prison, entered into the house of Lydia, and when they have seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. Paul came back to the house of Lydia after they were arrested and imprisoned. And they went out of prison. And there they had seen the brethren. They comported them. You remember? Only Lydia was saved at first. You remember? In her house, they stayed there. And you know what was the result? Not only one was there to greet Paul and Silas, to comfort Paul and Silas. Not only one or one family was there, but there were many already that were there in that house. This means they were brothers, not only women. They were brothers, my friends. Oh, the missionaries end up at her house again. I really think the ministry they received in verse 15 by staying at Lydia's house was a surprise blessing. Okay, go back. Acts 16, verse number 15. And we will read it at the beginning of the sermon, but let's read again verse 15. And when she was baptized in her household, she brought us saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained them. Pinilit. Ni Lydia, na si Apostle Paul and ating mga missionary, they stay and there they become comfortable. And now, after being in prison and after being uh, uh, out of prison, uh, now we see that she would come to the house of Lydia. My friends, remember this. Paul cast out a demon, arrested for doing so, God sends an earthquake, released him from prison, and then the Lord converted the jailer. Amen? 
and his family and reappear before the government to exercise the rights as a Roman citizen. And he had been busy. Amen. As they lived Philippi, they have talked about how rough it had been, how hurt they were physically, emotionally, mentally, and maybe even spiritually. Silas might have said, you know, what we need is a place of rest, a place of comfort to recharge. Luke would have chimed and said, I know the perfect place. I remember how nice it was in Lydia's place. How hospitable she was. Let's go there. The word hospitality is akin of hospital. Now we rarely put those two words together into our culture because the mental images they generate are so different. Hospitality, you know. But you know what? A hospital is a place away from home that is designed to bring healing and wholeness. Hospitality is not about a vocation or about allowing your home and your presence to bring emotional mental and spiritual healing to others my friends your home your place could be a place of rest for others well you can say missionary we can do that now we have pandemic we have a lot of protocols to do to do but well we can still be hospitable in many other ways we do uh, a lot of innovations right now as we do our ministry I've often heard the old adage that a man's home is his castle. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is how we have begun to live. We have gated communities, guarded condominiums. We have unlisted number of contacts, phone numbers, and hoarding your privacy, secluding ourselves away. And uh, when my boys were younger, they, they look at about... Uh, you know, who's superhero, uh, the superhero. So they, my boys, they just live with Christian guys. They live with, with us all these years. And uh, uh, they make their own toys and uh, uh, make their own capes. And uh, they make their own uh, way in the house. And uh, sometimes they say, oh, that I'm Superman. I have my own fortress. This is my place. And Mano, that is your place. And... Uh, <laughs> But God did not design us to be like that. We were made for others. Amen. We were made for the community. Do you think so? Paul and Silas were encouraged by the brothers, by the brethren. Ah, 25 verses ago, there was no men. As you see in Acts chapter number 16. There was no men. Where did these brothers come from? Where did these brethren come from? They had come from Lydia and her evangelistic efforts. Her home was a statement of her wealth and success. And it became a mission outpost. It became a mission center for traveling missionaries. Now it is a church. Now it is a place of refuge. Missionaries encourage the brothers of the church. But how encouraged they were as they were in partner amen lydia was using the gifts and possessions to start the church in philippi paul is using his gifts and ability as well to exhort encourage build a church in spiritual uh, well-being uh, they became a community they worked together with each of their gifts and abilities working together as a corporate body of christ and that is a great picture of the church it say in chapter 42 verse 6 7 to 8 let me read to you I the Lord have called thee in righteousness and will hold thy hand and will keep thee and give thee for covenant of the people for light to the Gentiles to open the blind eyes to bring out the prisoners from prison and them that sit in darkness out of prison house I am the Lord that is my name and my glory will I not give to another. My friends, what we do in missions, as we apply the principles, it becomes wisdom. We must see that our purpose in doing the service for God 
is for his glory. My friends, let me tell you a story. In conclusion, my friends, there was this lady who in the morning early of March 13, 1964, approximately three in the morning, 28 year old, her name is Kitty, was returning to her home in a nice middle class area in Queens, New York. She was parking her car in the nearby parking lot, turned off the lights and started to walk to her second floor apartment 35 yards away. She got as far as the street light when a man grabbed her. She screamed. The lights went out in the 10th floor building nearby. She yelled, oh my God, oh my God, he stopped me. Please help me. Windows opened on those big buildings in the apartment building and a man's voice shouted, let the girl alone. The attacker looked up, shrugged and walked off down the street. Now Miss Kitty struggled to get to her feet. Lights went back off in the apartments. It became dark again. Then the attacker came back and stopped her again. She again cried out, I'm dying, I'm dying. And again, the lights came on and the windows opened in many of the nearby apartments. But the assailant again left, got into his car and drove away. 3.35 a.m., the attacker returned once again. He found her in a doorway, fatal, but the consequence is that at 3.50, when the police received the first call, they responded quickly and within two minutes, they were at the scene. But you know what? Miss Kitty was already dead. The fatal consequence is that on the third time the assailant came, nobody came to rescue her. Kitty Ginoves was a name that would become symbolic in the public mind of the dark side of the national character. My friends, let us not be complacent in helping others. Let us hear the call and let us give glory to God and rescue the perishing. May God help us to realize that what we do in missions is because our purpose is for the glory of God. And our pattern is from small to big. And our perspective must be through the eyes of the Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless us. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for the privilege of preaching. Bless now your people as they answer to the challenge of the word. This I ask and pray in Christ Jesus' name. Amen.